Hi. Hey guys, can you hear me? I can hear you too. Yep. Okay. Good. Nope, we can't. Good. It's perfect. I'm ready to go. Hello, Melissa. It's good to see you. Hello. I'm not going to be able to be on long, probably about an hour before the dogs request whatever it is they request. I have my son's two dogs, so it's a little chaotic. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Well, semi good. I had uh, Taco Bell for lunch. That was a mistake. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we're Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Quiet bunch. Annie's not going to make it. She called me and said that. Uh, She's having to work overtime. All right. Beth, are you back permanently? What do you mean permanently? Well, <laughs> weren't you gone? I went to my parents for a couple of days. That's it. Oh, okay. Beth is back until she leaves again. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed at work tonight. It's too hot to go home. I figured you would. I'm going to turn off my air conditioner. It's getting cold in here. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you, Margie. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Is it down to 75? Do you need a jacket? <laughs> oh, just about. <laughs> Don't you have any air at all, Brian? Any air conditioning? No, I'm, I am. I am currently forty-six years old. I have never had a, never lived in a place that had air conditioning. Oh no, it's coming in handy now. I would have moved to Canada if I didn't have AC. <laughs> Someday I'll have AC, and when I invite you all over to the house, you'll have to bring jackets. Because <laughs> we're going to make up for 46 years of no AC. <laughs> we didn't have it when I was a kid, but Little Falls didn't get that hot for very long back then. And my mom had a system of keeping shades closed and stuff like that, that it was a a fairly thick walled stone house from the 1800s. So if you, yeah. as long as you didn't let the sun heat it up through the windows, it would stay cool reasonably well. Yeah. But Little Falls yeah. is halfway to Canada from here, so. My, I've only used the air maybe, I would say a week at the most. And that's like a day here, a day there. Because it stays fairly cool in here because of my thick walls yeah. are made out of brick, you know. I've got yeah. real thick brick walls. Those this houses house up doesn't... there in Ligonier stay cool because that's the way they were built. Yeah. 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 All right, guys. Hey, let's uh, kind of get started. It's five after. Uh, we have a new person on this evening, uh, Jared. Uh, he contacted me through Facebook. I sent him an invite to... Uh, Check us out. So he's the one. He said he's on through his phone. So we probably won't be able to see him tonight, but he's here. Oh, no, there he is. Yeah. There. Jared. Hi, Jared. Hello, everyone. Looks like Jared's in his car. <laughs> so Probably got the air conditioner yes. on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. And it's a thought. I could go park. I could go sit out in my truck. 
Um, well, welcome, Jared. I hope you uh, pick up something new here and, and decide to, uh, to join us on a more regular basis, but I uh, want to welcome you in uh, to the WPS to check it out. And uh, Thank you for the invite and allow me to sit in on the meeting. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So tonight, uh, Marty's going to be talking about um, building a softbox. Is that what it was? Or a, I forget. How to build and use a light a box. A light box, yeah. light box, okay. Um, so she's going to talk about a do-it-yourself version of that. Uh, we're going to go through a little bit of uh, up-and-coming news and some few things like that that we need to uh, mention. Uh, I think there was uh, a... Um, couple in the news items that we should be mentioning because uh i think someone won the contest down at the uh down at the uh, uh renaissance festival i don't know who that was suzanne i don't know but i have one question though brian how much are you paying these people to make sure they pick somebody from wps yeah <laughs> Well, I don't know because it hasn't worked for me. <laughs> I was so surprised. Um, I didn't see the email for a couple days. And then when I did see it, I thought it was spam. And <laughs> I almost deleted it. And then I, I looked at it again and I recognized the name, the woman's name. And that's when I realized, you know, I was very surprised. To, to it was a really least. cool shot too, Suzanne. Yeah. I like the. I really did like the photograph. That was a good yeah. one. It was a great Thanks, shot. So yeah. I'm glad to pass the first place over to you. Yeah, isn't that something, <laughs> Melissa? Who would have ever thought, huh? And I liked your photo too because you caught that tomato right right before it hit that guy in the face. You know? Yep. It was real, that was a good shot. Too. Well, I'll let you in on a little secret about that tomato. It did, did not hit him. Oh, it <laughs> missed him. Wow. Yeah. That, that tomato good. is about halfway between the thrower and the guy in the board. Oh, boy. Yeah, it didn't look like it, huh? Uh -uh. Yeah. Nope. Well, and that's okay if that's what people want to think let them think that <laughs> yeah. it even took me like a minute to remember about taking that photo because to be honest with you it wasn't even my favorite one so i was surprised you know that they picked that one but but real happy about it well, they took so long to pick the winners. I didn't even remember yeah. what ones I submitted. Yeah, I thought it, I thought the contest was over, you know. Yeah, I thought they picked the winners in previous uh, years, like within weeks of the Renaissance Festival being over. No, the year la the year that I won, they didn't pick it until like March the following year. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations to both of you. Um, or, uh, Suzanne won and Melissa got a uh, honorable mention. So, Which I don't think they ever do. Yeah, so good Which deal. Which would be yeah. half of the named winners are WPS. Right. Yeah. yeah. So good <laughs> that, deal. Good deal, guys. And they still sent good. me a, they still, they're sending me a pass a, for one person. Yeah, good. Good. Cool. So uh, again, that, that uh, festival will be coming up here very shortly. So we'll be going to... Uh, going down there to uh, take some pictures here before long too as well so i think it starts not this weekend next weekend i do believe you are correct uh, okay well i'll be there again oh well, me too yep <laughs> so um hey Brian, yeah, congratulations um, i noticed there's a another new name at least it's new to me here on the call which one ashley Hi, Ashley. She was on there for a second earlier. I don't know if she, she's probably hanging out. Uh, Ashley is from the uh, class, camera class. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I, I heard you. I was in the other room. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so, yeah, Ashley's from the camera class. Uh, she's joining us this evening. And mm -hmm. uh, she's been at every one of the classes so far and doing, doing pretty good. So... Well, welcome to the club, Ashley. Thank you. 
All right. Um, any other news? Uh, let's see. We got uh, we got a photo walk coming up. Is that this Saturday coming? Twentieth. Twentieth. The twentieth. And um, it's in Mount Pleasant. We're going to meet. Um, I think we said seven at the Diamond or the Pavilion or the Gazebo or whatever. It's it a is. Gazebo, and, yeah. Um, yeah, and then I was also thinking for those that can't come Saturday night, maybe we could do it Sunday night as well, because um, I can do a Sunday night as well. So um, we could do that as well if anybody's interested. So we'll have the Saturday nighters and the Sunday nighters. Well, that may work out. Does that mean? That, yeah, just let me know and um, we'll put it together. Okay. Um, what's that Mrs. about walks and, and stuff let me know because i have new hours for drop off and pick up for the show okay um yeah they changed the uh, greensburg art center changed a few of the hours as far as drop off and pick up uh for the show so um we'll be getting can we send that out in the update or something like that too, so that everyone gets it, not just the ones on the meeting tonight? Yes. Okay. Yeah, let me know. Okay, so um, on September 2nd, drop off will be 3 to 7 p.m. and Saturday, 10 to 1. Um, they didn't want to stay there for the eight hours and six hours or whatever. Because um, they're only open until. So um, they're actually giving us a couple hours on Friday night for those that work. Um, and then pick up, um, they realized that the Steelers have a game on Sunday, um, October 16th. So they moved it to Monday, October 17th, 10 to 12, and then Tuesday, October 18th, 5 to 8. Beth, I'll shoot that over to you. Okay. Thank you. I'll put it in on Sunday. Um, and just remember that your prospectus has to be to me on by the 13th. Um, I have two so far. Thank you for those that sent it. Marty, I'll try to get something over to you. My, my work computer died. It took me two weeks um to find out that they couldn't fix it so i'm trying to get another computer and get all my files back up and everything right so i've just been using this crappy laptop i have that i can't do anything on you know <laughs> so it shouldn't be too much longer okay no problem all right any uh Hey, anybody else have anything they want to bring up before we get the, into the main part of the program? Jim Murphy, you got anything? You always have at least one thing. I apologize for disappointing you this evening. Oh, man, really? All right. All right. Well, then uh, I guess we're ready to go ahead and get started with the, with the regular part of the meeting if Marty is ready. Sorry. She's eating her dinner. Hold on one second. I am sorry, everybody. It's been a busy day. Okay. So so then it's okay to drink, okay? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Feel free. So we're going to be talking about um, why you need a light box and an inexpensive way to design a light box. Um, and then um, I'll show you what I came up with um, today. <laughs> That's why I'm so late doing stuff because it got away from me. Um, but usually like what you wanna use a light box for is like product um, photography or food photography, or if you're selling something online where you need good lighting um, and it's a small item um, that you can put your lights on. I mean, you can buy a light box. I have one. But I also made one, so um, 
but it's to light up your product. Um, so it can go on to the internet or into um, product photography. So that's the why you should do a light box. Um, if anybody else has any other suggestions why you should do that, um, feel free to um, jump right in. Um, anybody? Okay. Yeah, make myself up a little. Um, so I have a video, and then I made the light box that he made. Um, I would like I made it like his. I added a little feature where you could put the camera down through the top, so you can get a top view shot. Um, there's lots of different ones. Some people made them out of boxes. Um, I made mine out of foam board from the dollar store. So I think I spent like maybe seven bucks to make this light box. Um, and then I do have my speed lights or whatever that I can use for the side. But you can also use like a lamp or, or anything that would shine light through your light box. Um, flash is probably the best way. So. Let me figure this out. Share screen. Oh, you know what? I didn't. It was to allow light to pass these more light pass. So in order to do that, you're going to take these. Can you hear it? And you're going to use your looper or tape measure and measure in two inches from every corner. Oh, wait. wait a minute. He started way early. I mean, he jumped in there. Let me start him over here. Sorry. Oops. Can you hear him? Yeah, I can hear it, but it's uh, kind of muffled. Take this light box, you're going to need five pieces of 20 inch by 30 inch foam board from your local dollar store, one of their rectangular party table two paint sticks, and then for tools, you'll need a marker, a scissors, a cutting tool, I'm using the exacto, a ruler, tape measure, and a straightener. So the first thing you're going to do is set aside three of the foam board pieces, and then you're going to take two of the pieces and cut them. So we need to cut each of these 20 inches long. Now we have our size pieces, but we're not done with these yet, because with your light tent, you need to be able to shine light in there to photograph the thing you want to photograph. We need to cut openings in these side pieces in order to allow light to pass into our light tent. So in order to do that, you're going to take these pieces and you're going to use your ruler or tape measure and measure in two inches from every corner. John, both should have markings that look like this. What you're going to do next is cut all of this center piece out. Careful when you take this out. You don't want to bend this. You want to maintain the integrity of this as much as possible. So now we have our two side panels here, but we need to put our diffusion material over them. That's what this tablecloth is for. So what you're going to do is one at a time, cut out a piece of this tablecloth to cover up this hole. Haven't cut out, duct tape it on. If you have any flaps, pull the tape off so you can press it down. It's not a big deal. Now, these paint sticks are to help give these side pieces structural integrity. So, what you want to do is take your paint stick and just tape it right to this edge here to give this edge some extra integrity. Now, we assemble. Assembling is probably the trickiest part. The first thing you want to do is grab those pieces of foam 
floor that you set aside and find the best surfaces for your bottom and your back. And what I need to do is tape them together here to make a joint. So what I like to do is take one of these edges and put tape across it so that it is ready for me to join the two together. And I'm going to overlap onto the table some like that. So now I have this flap of tape here. And what I can do is set this other piece up against there and then tape it up like this. The next thing we're going to do is put in one of the side pieces. So grab one of your side pieces, make sure your paint stick is towards the front. And what you're going to do is tape along both of these joints. Oh, we need to put the top on. I want to share a little upgrade that you do in order to change the backdrop on the interior because right now we're fixed with white. But if you want to be able to switch it around, you can pretty. Let me show you what I'm talking about. At your local dollar store, buy white and black poster board. And if you don't have them, you can buy binder clips. And the idea here is to take the interior of the box and make a spot where we can clip a piece of this poster board in there to create a different colored background for the subject you're about to photograph. So what you want to do to achieve that is come along here to your backside and just take your piece of poster board and lay it across the top. And using your marker or just your knife, mark two spots where you want to cut an opening for your binder clip in order to be able to clip onto your poster board create your background. Now I'm going to grab my binder clip and just cut a little opening that is wider than my binder clip so my binder clip will fit in there pretty easy. And this is just to allow me to clip it in. So I have this little opening right here now and I have my binder clip and I can just clip it like that. So I'll cut my other one out over here and now I can put my piece of post cord in here or tip it on its back like this because then the paper just falls inside into, into place and you can clip it pretty easily. You can clip here like so. And then on the interior, now you've got a different colored background. So that's how you make a DIY light box for product photography, super cheap and super easy. And in my next video, which will be linked here as soon as it's ready, I'm gonna show you how to take amazing product photos like this right here, how to get that beautiful, clean white. All right, so that's basically what I did. I did do a couple other little things. So I don't know if y'all can see my light box that I made. Let me disconnect some wires. Can you see it? Can everybody see this? Hello? No, your background's taking over. Oh, I guess so. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Okay. Now you'll be able to see it. Okay. You see it now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I did the cutout, but I did a three inch side uh, just to give it a little bit more stability. And then I got rulers and put it on the front and the top because I figured if I'm going to be putting my camera down through, I wanted a little bit more um, sturdiness to the top part as well. So it wouldn't bend. Um, I did put the clips in like they did. And then I have the black and the green, and they have all different colors. It's not just black and white at the Dollar Tree. Okay, so you can have whatever color. I was gonna try the green to see if I could do it like a green screen and see if I could put something, like project something behind the product. So I'm gonna try that um, at one point. Uh, they also had this nice hologram wrapping paper that I thought might be kind of cool in there. Um, 
all this I got at the dollar tree. So, um, so the only other thing I did was at the top, I made this little door. So my camera can go down through here and I can get a top shot or I could put a piece of, um, I used um, tissue paper, two uh, pieces of tissue paper for my diffuser uh, instead of the tablecloth uh, because I didn't know if maybe if my lights got too hot, it might melt it. So <laughs> I wanted to be like safety minded. So I did use two uh, pieces of tissue paper on the sides. Um, you could also use tissue paper on the top and add a light up there um, to give you some top light. Um, I also saw that um, like at Ollie's, they have this LED like um, taped lighting that you can get. That might be something that you might wanna add to it. Um, but that would, again, I think those little lights there are, um, is this there? Under 10 bucks. So you could put a strip of that in there. But this is my light box. Um, I may change it a little bit where I can fold it down. So I might use some Velcro or something where I can um, un-Velcro it so I can lay it, like fold it flat because where in the heck am I going to store this <laughs> after I made it? So, um, so there might be some more modifications coming. But um, yeah, that's my light box. It took me uh, a little bit of time just because, you know, my life isn't easy. <laughs> so that is my presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. You're welcome. I don't know if it was worth making it, but you know, <laughs> I did it. Bigger than mine and a little sturdier than the one I have because I have one of those collapsible light boxes. So this might be a little bit better. You could always use like my my um collapsible light box came with backdrops. I could use that in there with those clips. So um, and I got some white cloth I was gonna try to clip in there just to see, you know, different stuff. So you're not limited to the poster boards. Any questions? I, I think it's sturdier than the one that I got on Amazon. Cause the one I got on Amazon keeps like, if I don't have much in it, it like rolls around cause it doesn't really stay flat no matter what side I put down. So I made one using a box. I don't know, probably it was before Nate. It was probably 15 years ago. And I used tracing paper for the windows. And you can yeah. add or subtract basically, tracing paper. That's basically what tissue paper is. So yeah. that's what I use. You could use parchment paper, you know, anything to diffuse it. Um, I was gonna do the box one where you line it with the foil and it's like, I don't have time <laughs> to do that. But um, I also know like at Ollie's, they have these like um, the plastic corrugated board um, light boxes. Um, I think one is like $12 and the other one's like 18, $20. They're two different sizes and they actually have the LED lights in them. So, I mean, that's an option for a cheap light box too. That's a good price. Yeah. It would so, be good for, it's good for like, if you're doing like a flower, you light up a flower in there, use your little clips to hold it and stuff too. So I'm gonna take this down when we do um, station Saturdays and we can use it. Actually, Gracie has this old horse barn thing for, I don't know. And I was wow, thinking horse. about making that into a like <laughs> I saved it. The horse got broke, but I saved the barn so I could make a white box out of it. <laughs> so I think um, 
in the past we've I've brought a couple of mine in whenever we had meetings uh, face to face. And I have, I think, two different ones that I bought, and I bought them on Amazon. I, I think the bigger one I spent like maybe 30 bucks for, and it came with a couple of lights, and we've used it a couple of times. They, they do work. They're pretty cool things. And then the smaller one I have has the LED lights inside of it, I believe, a strip or something that uh, was pretty cool. So good deal. So who's going to build one? <laughs> I might. Hard. It really okay. I mean, you can go smaller. You don't have to make it so big. <laughs> I like the idea with the Velcro. So it will lay flat. Yeah, yeah. I think like, I think I might modify it to do that. So my class is going to go up when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't use the duct tape. I just used packing tape. What do you, what'd you say you have in it total? Do you think? Oh, one, two, so five, six, seven, eight bucks. All right, so less than ten dollars. Nice. And I have like more tissue paper, so if it gets ripped, I can replace it. Oh, I might have. Yeah, I spent a little bit because I didn't want to go to the paint store and get paint stir, so I got the little wooden. Rollers two for a dollar, so yep. yeah, I'm right around ten bucks. All right, good deal. All right, um, is tonight tips and tricks, Margie? No, it is not. I always confuse that. I don't know why. I think I asked at every meeting. Is tonight the night we do that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so tonight is not tips and tricks. All right. So, um. Okay. I want to try I something. I want to, as, as, as based on an email that I received a few minutes ago, <laughs> Beth's laughing at me. Uh, <laughs> I want to try something a little bit different for a few minutes. Um, we're going to, I'm going to ask you guys to ask two questions about whatever, something that you're thinking about, something that you need help with, something that you're confused on. And we'll see if we can answer them. Does that sound fair? Understand? Does everyone not know what I mean? Yep, I know what you mean. Okay. So who wants to start? Who wants who has a question that they would like to ask the group? I do. And pre preferably on photography. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to give chew advice or anything like that, but <laughs> <laughs> I will if it has to do with photography. <laughs> Go ahead, Rush. Well, yeah, what do you do if your subject doesn't smile? <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I have, when I wrote this down uh, a couple of days ago, uh, let's see, does, oh, does LRC run in the background after the CPU sleeps? That's my question. What was See, that? I never, well, sometimes when you have, uh, I have, you know, a lot of images in my system. And sometimes when I'm moving them around from one place to another, then Lightroom has to catch up with moving the metadata along with it. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, keywords and uh, things like that and the settings, uh, and it takes a while. Now, what I have done is when I go to turn it off, it'll say that it is still oh, loading metadata. Energy. What was that? Go ahead, keep going. Oh, um, it's when I uh, turn it off, when I go to turn it off, of course, you're, you're going to want to save the, the data. Um, it says Lightroom will pick up downloading the metadata when you turn it back on. But my question is, if I... Uh, go off somewhere and I'm not turning it off, I'm just uh, letting it uh, idle, then it'll go to sleep and then sometimes it'll shut itself down. I mean, I've, I've set it up so that it doesn't do that now, but uh, it will go to sleep. And my question is, is it still loading? Let's say, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating, let's say I have 25,000 items that I'm moving from one 
terabyte hard drive to another terabyte hard drive, will it continue when I turn it back on again? Uh, that's the question. The question well, is, when it goes to sleep, you. when it goes to sleep, is it still downloading that data? Because so I wind up with question marks. I wind up with question marks on my uh, uh, images and in my folders at times. So maybe DL. I'm thinking that it, even though you, it's gone to idle, it's still, Lightroom should be running in the background. So okay. So it's a Windows 10 system. And even though it goes to you know, like a, a screen saver comes on and then it will just go into screen mode uh, that it should still be doing that. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I can't That's say for point. sure. I can't say I, for sure. I would say that it, it does work. until the point where the computer itself goes to sleep. Yeah. Uh, if you, Lightroom will stop the computer from shutting off. Will it? Okay. Uh -huh. Because hey. it'll come up with a prompt. Do you want to? Do you want to shut down? The uh, Lightroom will ask you, and if you don't affirm affirmatively answer, it won't shut down. But Rex, if you get question marks, that means Lightroom doesn't know where the image is. Yeah, I've, I and I've been able to over time get it all back because I show it where the folder is, and then it starts picking it up again from mm -hmm. there. But um, let's see, what, what was uh, my question going to be in connection with that? <laughs> it escapes me. <laughs> I'm only 80, so it doesn't, <laughs> it's an excuse. Okay, well, I'll, I'll remember what DL said there that, oh, I know, I know what I was going to say. Um, when, uh, what I did is after I started having problems worrying about that, uh, I went into the Windows system and I had it set so that when the computer uses wall power, never turn off. That's the one thing I've done. So it's it's set to not turn off until I turn it off because I want it turned off. That's what I do with my computer. Okay. Yeah, I do the same. With, I do the same with mine. If they're plugged into the power, they don't shut off. Yeah. Okay, good oh, question. My, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was, I was gonna say a good question, Rex. Thank you. Okay. Yes. You got any you got any follow-up questions? We'll take them. Or is that good? Yeah, from I've had some other ones in the past, but they've sort of found their way into the round file. Okay. But so that's it for now. All right. Thank you, Rex. Mm -hmm. Who else has a question? So Brian, I'll take a turn, but it's not so much a question, but as a follow-up to the uh, presentation I had last month on Luminar uh, AI, okay. and Luminar Neo. Um, those of you who were on that call um, might remember that I had a bridge photo with a, it was a blue hour, plain blue sky with a bridge in the foreground. Right. And we attempted a sky replacement and uh, it did just a god awful job. It was it was unusable. And later during the course of the, the presentation, Margie mentioned, and, and I certainly concurred with her, that there are some adjustments that you can make when you attempt a sky replacement to try to eliminate some of those problems. So a day or two after the meeting, I did take that bridge photo and played with the adjustments. Now, realizing that that was the first time I ever played with those adjustments, I might've been able to do a better job, but the bottom line was, although I could improve upon that just general sky replacement that you saw during the meeting, there were still areas of the bridges um, uh, support, um, not columns, the wiring, cables, the, the support cables for the bridge um, still were um, pasted over, if you will, with the sky. And as much as I filled with the adjustments, I couldn't get that eliminated throughout the entire photograph. So I think there still are some inherent limitations that hopefully Skylum works on over the next few months to, to improve that product. So that was it, just an update. Okay. Thank you, Jim. 
Anybody else? I have, have a question. Good. Um, now this is be my first meeting and just kind of question to I guess get an idea of the group and everything. Just kind of wondering what genre of photography everyone kind of I guess specializes in or likes to shoot. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'll tell you what I've learned over the years is that um, as a member, that we kind of get challenged to try a little of everything, Jared, to try a little of everything. Macro, people in the street, studio, anything you can think of, tabletop photography floating flowers, just about everything. We challenge to take shots at doing these things. What is your favorite? Jared, you mean Jared? What's Jared's favorite? Well, yours, I know, uh, your, you know, yours photography with models and, the, you know, Art, people. Portraiture. Yeah, portraiture. Portraiture, there, that's what I'm what thinking. Is, what what is about you, well Jared? Um. I am mainly focused in sports photography. Um, so like just sport action photography, you know, going to the games, catching those moments, um, you know, stuff like that. But I definitely enjoy pretty much almost any other type of photography and I've shot almost other types of photography and everything. So, but yeah, sports is kind of like where I concentrate mainly on. Jared, are you doing kids, like your kids sports? Uh, I'm actually, whenever they played sports, I did some of them, but now they're, at, I have twin boys that are six, so they're kind of like, we want to play, but we don't want to play, and they don't know, yeah. <laughs> um, but I do like high school, I do a lot of high school, I've done some college, um, I've worked for a couple smaller media outlets uh, shooting sports, the Pittsburgh Sports Now, um, Pittsburgh Hockey Digest, so I've shot a lot of high school hockey. Um, and then recently, I just got uh, the gig for doing Franklin Regionals girls volleyball team pitchers. So just dropped off their banners the other day. Their senior banners at the hangout. Okay, good. Well, I, I'll, I will uh, go with what Rex said is in, in this group, as far as photography wise goes, uh, everyone here is... Um, they try a lot of different things, uh, you know, and, and everyone has their favorite, you know, I like, I, 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 me particular, I like to do landscape photography, but I've done sports photography. I was a news photographer. Um, I've done race cars and all kinds of things like that. All kind of, all kind of different things. Uh, Rex, as he said, he's a portrait photographer. Um, Dennis is an amazing black and white landscape photographer and, and other stuff in black and white. He, he does amazing black and white stuff. Uh, Beth is black and white, but Beth does hers on film for the most part <laughs> quite often. So um, yeah, the, the group itself, to answer your question, Jared, is very diverse as far as what they do and what they like to do. Um, and, but we do like to challenge everyone to, you know, if you're a portrait photographer and Rex has, Rex has said this several times over the years, that we take him on an, on an outing and now he has to learn photography all over again because it's something different, <laughs> uh, you oh, yeah. know, because we're, we're on a street in Pittsburgh taking, you know, doing, you know, taking uh, strip district shots, you know, we're just walking yeah. around taking pictures yeah. or we're at a waterfall somewhere and, and that's something different than what he did before. So uh, we encourage yeah. everyone to, to spread out a little bit uh, from what they normally do Um to to kind of get better at every at photography overall. Oh, sounds good. I mean, I'm interested in pretty much all photography. Like I said, my main thing is sports. But I mean, I've gone to school for photography. Well, still going to school for photography. I'm almost done, but I've taken like all those classes and I'm definitely found enjoyment in all other types of photography, not just sports. So good. And all the tick all the the tricks and tips that you pick up along the way help with everything mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah you yeah. definitely tie a lot of like i know 
landscape and you know being able to read like the light how it falls on land and all that stuff can be very useful for uh editorial piece you know you know stuff like that so you can definitely take things from other genres and place them within other genres yep good question thank you okay who else has a question Tell me how you go ahead, Ellen. Mine's kind of directed more towards uh, Nikon. And you you started this, Brian. When you <laughs> told me about doing the thing for the cameras there, how I like this seven. I was playing around with it the other week, and I found that if you go into the shooting menu. And then go into uh, photo control. That's where you get your different uh, white balances with the direct sunlight, cloudy, all that. Um, okay, say you, say you click on cloudy. If you go to the uh, selector wheel and you click off to the right, it comes up with all kind of, um, I don't know what to call them. I'll, I'll call them graphs for lack of a better term. There, you can adjust color, sharpness, contrast, all that kind of thing. Now, does that affect your camera itself when taking a raw photo, or does it just embed into the to the file? The raw image, you mean? Yes. Well, I believe you're talking about um, making adjustments to the white balance, correct? Yes, kind of, sort of. Um, I mean, it's easier if you have your camera in your hand to, to, to actually do it, but like, I'm on the set picture control now. I, I right click that selector wheel and go to say neutral. Then if you click off the neutral again, let's see if I can bring it up on my camera here, my laptop. Uh, no way. No. Um, so what that what you're doing is you're able to go in and you're saying when you go in into neutral, from there you can go in and adjust your neutral to what you want it to be. So correct. Can, yeah. Um, Contrast, brightness, saturation, all that stuff on that right, neutral. Right. So that will affect yes the picture that you're taking, because you've told it now I'm going to go for neutral, but I want neutral with a plus three contrast and a plus one brightness. So it's going to do that. <clears throat> I think I'm not 100% positive because I've not used it, but I think that on that Nikon, you can save that as a preset then. And then you can pick that as a preset that you want to use rather than just having to go in and change it every time. Well, from what I see on here, when you set that, it's there permanently, other than if you go back in and, go back and reset it. it. Yeah. I think there is, though, a way to go in and make that a preset in your menus. Um, said I've not done it in a long time. I did it a few years back on my previous camera where I went in and did some presets for different uh, um, white balances where I, I adjusted them and then turned them into another setting, basically. Uh, but I'm pretty sure you can still do that. But I, I just don't remember how to do it as far as through the menu wise goes. So what you're telling me is get out the owner's manual and look yourself. <laughs> um, well, that's usually a good place to start. <laughs> yes, or, RTFM. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's it's been a long time since I've done any of that where I've done those presets, but I'm pretty sure that you can do that with that camera uh, and set that, go in there and make those adjustments and then save that as a preset for yourself. Well, when, once you do that, then does it um, permanently affect your your raw files, or just if you use like a say a Nikon editing? Like, uh, what the heck does that one they have? But uh, well, the big thing is is that it will um, no, it's going it's going to affect the metadata to the file. So when you when you take the picture off of their computer, the metadata will have that set up in it. 
it's already pre-adjusted at that. Yeah, it'll have that in it. So okay. if you've taken your neutral and you've added a plus three contrast, then every picture that you shot in neutral will have a plus three contrast. Okay. Do it. But that's still editable once you yeah, bring it. I mean, you can put it in Lightroom and then take that back out if you choose to. Because it's a raw file. That's just, yeah. that's your starting point. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was getting at. If that was the starting point on your edits. I'm putting a link in the chat. You can read through that. It's old, but I think the concept is still the same. Ellen, get into YouTube also. And a lot of the uh, YouTube videos will give you a breakdown of how to use it. What kind of camera do you have? I know it's an icon, but what type? Which Z7 is the one I found that on, but mm -hmm. I, I found it on my 850 also. Okay. Yeah, I'd just get into YouTube and sit there and play with it for an afternoon. I have a quick question, Alan. Are there, are there, you said on neutral, is there other like options like landscape, portrait, yes. stuff like yes. that? Now, I'm a Canon shooter, so I don't know about Nikon, but there might be ones like lower that are designed to be like presets. So you can maybe even change those if you don't want to change like the stuff in landscape or neutral. Yeah. And then that way you don't have to worry about messing with those ones and you can just mess with the couple customizable ones, if that makes sense. Yeah, they uh, Nikon has, uh, I forget if it's two or three, this seven has three preset channels that you can use instead of using like manual or aperture priority or anything that way. Um, you can set those things as for one of those presets as well, though. Yes, I would so imagine. If you were setting that preset, then yeah, like Jared said, you could go into uh, to set that. Say you're setting preset number one, we'll say. You could go in and adjust that to be neutral plus three in contrast and, uh, you know, whatever settings you can change, you can do that. And then that'll all store to that one preset. And then you don't have to worry about messing with the actual like neutral or the main neutral one. for yeah for your normal it for should have like a separate cover. one yeah on that preset well um you have canon equipment jared right so um I, we have uh, three of them here um the uh one that has <clears throat> a lot of uh what we'll call filters on them is the uh, 60D. Are you familiar at all with the EOS 60D? 60D? Yeah, 60D. 60, 60D. 60D. Um, now, I haven't used them, but I do know that there is uh, a, a sub file set that you can go into in the menu that allows you to uh, create black and white, create sepia, um, and put uh, special effects on it. Uh, I, I don't use them because if I'm going to do anything like that, it's going to happen in Lightroom or Photoshop. Yeah. But uh, so if you have anything like a 60D or a, a 5D or a 1DS, um, uh, you may have access to that in the camera. And uh, yeah. I would I would believe I'll trust to say that no matter what of those filters that you use, that you'll get a CR2 file. OK, unless it's an older Canon, then it'll be called a TIFF, but it will still be a raw file that it will be in good shape. It will have everything you need to do anything you want with it. It's not going to be tampered with. Um, the, what will happen is you'll get two files. You'll get it uh, to show up as a, a JPEG and as your CR2 file. Okay. Yeah, I know on my um, my, well, I have a 6D 
a six D Mach two, and then R six, oh. and at least the R six has. I, I, whenever I do a lot of the landscape, I shoot it in black and white or monochromatic mm -hmm. um, color profile. But yep. whenever I, as as long as it's shooting raw, as soon as I import them into uh, camera raw through Photoshop, it right. uh, transforms it directly to color automatically. Yeah. So okay. it keeps so it, all the color it, profiles, all that stuff. It's just what I'm saying. seeing in my camera is black and white. Right. And with the Canon systems, and I think they're all pretty much alike, that you can set it up to shoot just raw. You can set it up to shoot mm -hmm. raw with a large JPEG, you know, the full size JPEG, yeah. 50 by 40 or whatever it is, 5,000 by 4,000. Or you can set it to produce smaller files, what they call fine or small JPEGs, so that you can have both when you load it into your hard drive or into your laptop uh, that you will actually get, instead of if you had shot uh, 30 files, you'll get 60. You'll get 30 raw and you'll get 30 JPEGs. And you can set them up to come up right beside each other. So, and the ones that are JPEGs will have those filters that you had set. Mm-hmm. enough of that okay All right. <laughs> well Alan, i don't know if we answered your question but we sure did talk about it for a while <laughs> hey, we needed something to do yep um yeah just uh so i know i know there's way i know there's reasons for that but uh do do a little checking in your in your manual and do a little checking in your uh uh YouTube and see see what the deal is with that, what they're planning on, how they're using that. Well, that was going to be my next follow-up question. Is it worth playing with or just forget about it? Um, um, I was going to say the only, the only thing that I, I'd like to say about it, it's good to have those things in your camera, but um, the screen size is so small, I can't really make a good evaluation of that. So my mission is always, my, my uh, endeavor is to always uh, get the very best file that I can when I take the image, when I take the picture, and then all of the rest of it happens uh, in Lightroom or Photoshop. Yeah. All right. Well, I see Melissa says that she's leaving here very shortly. So thanks for stopping by and hanging out with us for a little while, Melissa. Thank you. I'll see you guys all soon. Have a good evening. Yep. Oh, hey, guys, there's links in the, our best been posting a couple links there in the chat. Uh, if you haven't looked at those and when I post the video later, you know, I'll add those links into uh, into uh, the description on a video for you all too as well if you miss them and marty if you could post a link to that video that you showed that way i can throw that in there as well okay any other uh who else has a question i do um if you're taking pictures of the night sky is there a good starting point for your settings uh usually looking up <laughs> Other than that, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on what what night sky are you taking pictures just, of. What are you trying say, to accomplish? Just say stars, dark, very dark, and you want to catch the stars. Okay. Uh, who wants to? Anyone want to answer that or try to answer that, or you want me to? Ryan, I can, I've Good. got a couple of tidbits if you want. Okay. Um, and this won't answer your complete question, but particularly night sky. Um, if you don't want star trails in your photo, because you do need a relatively longer exposure, um, depending on the camera and the lens, the, the time will vary. But in, in general terms, I'm, I'm going to say roughly 20 seconds would be 
uh, just kind of a rule of thumb that you don't want your exposure to go beyond 20 seconds or you're likely to have star trails. They, they won't be points of light. They'll be, depending on how long your exposure is, trails of light instead. Okay. So um, one of the things I would say is that uh, you want to use the fastest lens you have. So, you know, if you've got a, if you've got a, the fastest and widest lens is typically what we try to do. So, um, but if you've got a 51.4 and a 28, it's a 4.5, use your 51.4 because you can, you can get it open, uh, get more light into it that way. Um, and then that uh, as, as uh, Jim was saying, a 20 second exposure, if you get too long of exposure, then the stars start to move. So you got to be careful with that. Um, and then another thing is that, that I've always done is I've played a little bit with the, uh, the temperature of the picture. So the Kelvin, instead of using a white balance of, of normal or something like that, I throw in a little different uh, temperature to the picture and that'll bring the stars out better. And normally I'm gonna make them a little bit bluer. Uh, so I make them a little bit colder. Uh, is something that I do as far as taking pictures of the sky. Okay. Anybody else have any tips they wanna throw in here? I mean. Try to get away from any ambient light. Right. The darker the better it is. Right. So I find. Go ahead, Alan. I find with mine, I use a 20 millimeter Sigma art lens. It's uh, 1.4. If I go over eight seconds, my stars start to look like footballs. <laughs> so they start moving. Yeah. I. I knew I don't know what the what the time was. I can't remember. It's been a while since I did them, but I know that the longer exposures made the stars move. You you start to pick up the movement of the Earth that way, uh, so the stars are moving, uh, and then they become elongated. As as Alan said, they turn into footballs, and the longer you go, the longer the football gets. Now, if you got about six hours to spend, you can point it at the North Star and stand there and let it on the whole time, and you'll just have circles going around. <laughs> yep. So go out and play. Pretty yeah. Much. Like everything else in photography. And and Beth and uh, uh, Beth has thrown in another uh, link there for uh, rules for stars. Oh, cool. 500 rules rule for stars so take a uh take a peek at that link as well great and thank you marty for throwing that link in for the video and brian just to tie in the um your suggestion for the most wide aperture lens that you have and the discussion about the length of the uh the exposure what you end up doing then to get a proper total exposure is you end up adjusting um your ISO accordingly. And again, depending on how wide of an aperture you have, the ideal world would be that maybe you can get your ISO down to maybe 1600 if you're lucky, but if you're not lucky, you might be up at 6400. And that will depend on how wide open an aperture you have. The, the more wide open you can get, the lower the ISO and therefore the less noise. Right. And Linda, this is this is talking about taking star photos. This is not talking about taking pictures of the moon. That's different. Right. Okay. Right. When you start taking pictures of the moon, everything changes. Got it. Also, a shutter release. Okay, I have one. A red light, so it don't ruin your night vision. Yeah. And if you can do your viewfinder, cover it. They've got little covers you can put on your viewfinder so no surrounding light will go in there. Okay. Yeah, uh, check, the, uh, check the eyepiece. Sometimes there's a little lever on there that you can swing up that will close it. 
Right. It's a shutter. It's a rear shutter, Jim. Yeah. I, I mean, I, uh, Linda, I use that as well as as well as covering it up. Even even with that, I will cover up the viewfinder as well. I normally just put my hat over top the camera when I go to take a picture. That way, it covers that back end up. Because at night, I don't have to worry about burning my bald head. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And bear spray. You never know what you're going to run into at night. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to try the Milky Way again this year? Or is it pretty late in the season or what? Mm, I don't know. Ask Alan. Well, actually, according to the chart I use, it says the 27th, I believe it is, is supposed to be a good day. Night. Is that the day that you posted that you're going up to the... Uh... Uh, that was uh, actually Saturday. Oh, was that this past Saturday? Yeah. Well, I missed that. <laughs> well, it, well clouds I don't know if it up. rained up there, but where I was at, it was raining. Yeah, it was raining down here where I'm at, so... Oh, it was really raining. Yeah. I was trying to do lightning shots, too, but that kind of sucked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you're here, so some part of it was successful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fortunately, <laughs> it didn't hit me, but you know, it would flash over back. on my right-hand side the one time I'd set up for that, and then it would flash over on my left. I'd set up for that, and then it would go back behind me. Alan, do you have one of the lightning triggers for your camera? Actually, <laughs> I just ordered one today. Yeah. Those are supposed to be nice. Do you have one, Dennis? No. Yeah, I'm not well, going to stand out where it's lightning and take photos. Aww. <laughs> well, you can leave your camera out there to take the brunt of it. You just, yeah, you use a release in. shutter. Really. I, can, I can tell you that I, I've done it up to the point where the hair started to stand up on my arm. Yeah. And back yeah. no, that's, no and good. That's, that's long enough. Uh, I'm going back inside. So, mm -hmm. uh, all right. Anybody else have any questions? I like this question and answer thing. Mm -hmm. Until now, no, no. <laughs> well, you know, I have one. All right. If you're once you've been staring at an image for a while, how can you tell if the color is what you want or not, or if if it's shifted or something? Once you've been looking at it, walk when away. On your computer, exactly. Walk away. Walk away. Yeah. Go do something else. Yeah, go like do black something and white else in the for a little room. while. <laughs> yeah. Go do something else for 10 or 15 minutes and then come back and look at it. Okay. Once you've looked at it for a period of time, it's yeah. hard to, it's really hard to figure out the color cast and things like that because you're staring at it. So if you go, if you walk away, you come back and go, Oh crap, that thing is completely green. <laughs> you know, and then you'll see it then because you, you're, you know, you've went and looked at other things and your eyes have adjusted and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I always walk away. Yeah, I do too. I I almost never will post a picture to you guys to see until I've done the work on them and then come back to them the next day to look at them and then post them. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, I see a lot of landscape pictures that are nice, but to up it, what would you do to make it, to get a better landscape picture? What are some hints that you would do? I mean, you can only see so many trees, so many waterfalls, so many lakes. Move to Yellowstone. What? Yeah, I was going to say move to Scotland. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's a nice place. Well, it used to be a nice place to go. Yeah, having some kind of subject in there. You know, Jim did one one time that I really liked, and he had Pat in there. But you didn't really see her. And you just saw, I think she had, what, Jim, a red coat or something on. And it just seemed to up it. Because we see landscape pictures are basically the same over and over again. So what can you put in there 
if you're by yourself, to up the landscape picture. If you're not by yourself, say, you put a person in there. I was going to say, wait, see what the light does. It might hit the landscape a certain way than what you normally see or how the clouds move. Yeah, I've done that. I've definitely done that. <laughs> I think I've even put it on slow shutter speed so we can get some really nice, you know, shapes to the clouds. Uh, clouds have always been very important to me. I take a lot of pictures of clouds. But um, in the lighting, of course, you have to have good lighting, uh, shadows, light, and et cetera. But there's got to be something to, I mean, I've thought about taking some potted plants and putting them in there somewhere or just something else besides the norm. I think one of the things that I like to do is, I mean, and Beth, you know that you and I go to Cucumber Falls quite often to take pictures. Um, but I've, I've photographed Cucumber Falls for 20 years now. So, I, you know, it, it does get boring. And, and your your shots of it get boring because you take the same picture over and over again. Um, some of the best pictures I've taken of Cucumber Falls, I believe, were ones where I decided to do it from the other side of the creek. I changed my perspective completely. Yeah, you can go. Yeah. Um, I take it from further down the creek or further or closer to the, you know, I, I take it from a completely different point of view. Um, and I think that's a, I think that's something that that's really important as far as landscape photography because if we're going to the same place and taking the same picture over and over again, we're not getting any better. We're just taking the same picture over and over again. So go out and, and try a different perspective is really the big thing, I think. Well, I do a lot of belly shots. So um, and uh, that really is a different angle because if you just stand there and take a picture like everybody else would do, you lose something there. Right, so but, I do try but, the different angles. But if if you're doing a lot of belly shots, then stand up. Well, try, I've done you know, stand you know, up try, too. Try it the other direction. Yeah. Um, you know, try it something different than what your normal is. Um, and it'll, I think that'll give you a opportunity to to see what, what it would look like a different way. Yeah, I, I do a lot of angle shots. I really do. Yeah. I mean, that's something that uh, I've done for years because, you know, I was in so much plant photography and you've got to take it from different angles you even have to take the roots and etc and dissect them so yeah different angles have always been important to me uh ladders it doesn't matter uh i've even climbed trees to take different angles but there's got to be some some kind of subject you can put in there besides just landscape is what i'm saying you know People is nice. My dogs would be, make it if they would obey me. Um, you know, Margie, I'll I'll take a crack at it. One thing that I'd be doing more and more is, um, even though it's quote a landscape shot, turn your camera ninety degrees and do it in portrait mode, and that 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 extra width allows you to put some foreground elements in it to fancy up the shot, if you will. Whether it's a- You mean a take a picture of myself? Or, I'm sorry? No. No. <laughs> Margie, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. I know you didn't just say, turn around and uh, your camera around and take a picture of myself with the background. <laughs> no, 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 he said turn- 90 <laughs> degrees and do a <laughs> portrait shot. Oh, okay. I know what you're saying. Yes, 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 yes. No, Marty, you don't even let other people take a picture. I know you. it. <laughs> it's yeah. not going to happen. No, do it. Yeah, do the it. portrait shot. It's true. Yeah. There are some, um, there are some uh, photos that I've taken with the portrait shot because it screams to be taken as a portrait shot. Then there's others with the landscape. So I just saw some photos of someone who did put like a potted plant in front of like a sunset and stuff. And that yeah. was really nice. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. What kind of uh, props would you yeah, use so, to increase? Like bottles, 
try a try a um, glass sphere. Uh, you know, one of those crystal balls. Uh huh. Try it upside down. Hand Do on panel. your head. <laughs> what did you say, Ellen? Do a panel, three shot panel or something. Uh, yeah, but we're still the same stuff. I'm looking at props that are easy to take along with you, but can up your photography. It can be live or it can be a dead prop. You know, I get, you know, it doesn't have to be. Like I said, if I had somebody to take with me, I can use them as a prop while they're walking away or something like that. You know, when I was doing the uh, critiquing, um, he showed where there was a beautiful landscape, but he says, bring it up. If there was somebody walking away, it would bring it up another notch. If there was some kind of wagon that is moving away, it would bring it up another notch. What I'm saying is, what do you have that could bring it up another notch? I said, I, I don't take anything with me. I, I photograph what I see and what is, what is there. Um, but I, I see your point as far as what, what can you add to the picture to make it better? Yeah. Really is, is the, is. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is what, what, what can you do? And me, for me personally, what I like to do is, is change my perspective. That to yeah. me is adding to my picture. Um, yeah, I've done that or or get wider and you know get to get some something in the foreground something different in a foreground or whatever whatever's available yeah um, what about just changing your lens yeah yeah, yeah i've done that yeah you don't have to but i do like anything. the idea of maybe finding something in the foreground yeah and you don't have to shoot a you don't have to shoot a landscape with a 20 millimeter lens you can shoot it with a 180 millimeter lens yeah uh, of course find different find different things in there that you can do with that so yeah as far as carrying something to a site to take pictures of it unless i can take it out of the bed of my pickup truck and move it about three feet that's as far as I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i haven't done that yet but yeah. i was just wondering if there was something because i know a lot of people have done that and it really looks good and I was just wondering if anybody here has actually done something like that. Yeah. I like to use Beth when she's using her four by five to, you know, <laughs> in front of me. Then I take pictures of her. Taking well, pictures of yeah. <laughs> I've, I've taken a lot of pictures. Yeah. I'm sorry, Marty. I've used, I, I used my crystal ball over at Mammoth um, and did a tree with the lake behind it. That kind of turned out nice because then what I did in when I post processed it, I flipped it so it's not upside down. Um, and it looks kind of cool. I don't have one, but I think I may pick up one. Well, I think you know enough people that have them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what I do. Yeah. <laughs> There's okay. a few of us. Yeah. No. And I haven't tried these with any landscape stuff yet, mostly with flowers because they're like around. But um, this is one of the Omni filter things from Lens Baby. Uh -huh. And it's a little, it's basically just a piece of plastic that you could actually shoot through, but it makes like little rainbows and stuff like that where it sees where there's more light compared to other spots. So. Depending on the scene, you can get different effects too. Yeah, I like that so idea it, too. It all depends on like where you are and what it looks like and what the lighting is. Yeah. All right. Hey, I noticed that Jared has posted there that he's got to get going. So Jared, we appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us for a little while. I uh, hope you enjoyed and we look forward to seeing you at one of our photo walks as well. That way we can kind of meet face to face and do a little shooting together. Yeah, thank you again for inviting me. Uh, real quick, uh, one suggestion I was thinking about is, have you, Margie? Yes. Is that correct? Margie? Yes. Um, 
what about like playing around with like the rule of thirds or breaking the rule of thirds um or even like looking for shots like frame within a frame yeah shot. i've done a lot of that <laughs> thank you jared I, yeah i've done them all i'm just no trying to think of some kind of prop you know yeah after thing hey margie jared. what about a window a window you want me to carry a window around well, a window frame a picture frame picture frame yeah you yeah. can do a picture frame and then frame your scene in the picture frame and then step back a little bit and take a picture of the picture frame. Yeah, I've done it with the mirror, though, also where it reflects off the mirror, the background of the uh, landscape. I've done a lot of different things like that over the hundreds of years or hundred thousands of photos <laughs> I've taken. You know, I, I Jerry, something about me, I like things that are outside the box. You know, oh, yeah. I'm a lot like Marty. Uh, Marty likes things outside the box too. And um, I'll just start, I'll just keep experimenting. I'll just come up with something sooner or later. Okay, Beth, Beth got a picture when, or a picture frame she brought with her or window or something, I don't know. When, we, when she figures out to shut her background off. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess I have to turn the <laughs> background off. Yeah. yeah. See, that's nice. How big is your backpack? <laughs> like I said, three feet from the pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> now, I can do that because my pickup truck has the ability to get some places that most people's pickup trucks doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jared, um, just if you would like to enter some photos for the uh, photo show that we're having at Greensburg Art Center, um, the deadline to get me that prospectus is on uh, August 13th. Um, Brian, did you send him a link to the newsletter? Uh, not as of yet. Jared hasn't joined yet. He wanted to check, or check us out today. The link, was, the link is in the okay. Sunday announcement. Yeah. Yes, it is. But if he's not joined yet, then I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> yeah. sorry. Well, I hope you join, Jared. Well, and I, I do want to. If I get a chance to join before that happens, I'll definitely take a close look at what you guys have going on. Okay. You you will learn a lot from us. I went to the co uh, college for this, and I learned more with this group than I did at college. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, Jared. Well, I'll uh, I'll I'll be uh, messaging you later on. All right, sounds good. Thank you. We've got another meeting coming up here in a few weeks. I'll I'll send you a link for that. You can check that one out too. It's a little different than this one. Okay, sounds good. All right. Thank you, and everyone have a good evening. You too. Good nice day. meeting Thanks, you. All right. Bye. Marge, you need to get yourself two German shepherds, and you're never alone. I need to give myself two what German Shepherds and no, I got two Aussies. I got too many Aussies. You'll see the Aussies down there when we go to the picnic this fall. I'm gonna bring my little babies with me. Oh, heaven forbid, you guys, you know how they are. Okay, well, um, don't forget we need to do a little bit of critiquing tonight. If y'all want to, if you don't, we can just go ahead and forget about it. That's up to you guys. You want to go ahead and jump over and do a little critiquing? We got, uh, yeah, we got some time. Yeah, but we could do the ones from what was last month, July. Uh, did you guys uh, like the question and answer kind of little? Yes, I did. It's all right. All right. So we won't do it all the time, but I think it's something we can throw in there when we need to fill a little bit of time. It uh, gives you an opportunity to ask a question if you're thinking about it. So. All right, Margie, uh, you want to do the critique part? Yeah, let me go ahead. Let's see okay. here. All right. Uh, let's just take this down. Okay. Does anybody see anything I'm doing? Yeah. yeah. I see a yellow flower. Looks uh, like a 
great photographer took that one. I think so. Let me just get in <laughs> here and, and do it this way instead. Let me get this here minimized. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, saw you, I saw that earlier. I seen you had uh, a little note on there about it being photo bumped. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I had to look more closely because uh, what happened is I was using the uh, uh, masking feature. And what I wanted to do is to mask the flower and then reverse the mask and darken the background because the background was competing uh, with the color and the shape of the flower. And I spent so much time on that. It was when I finally went in and looked real close, I saw there was a little ant right there at the bottom of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And just having a good old time. Wonder if that's I, related to Jim Murphy. <laughs> I don't know, but um, okay. Does somebody want to start the critique? Remember something yeah, this, good. How yeah, you? The, the, the color is great, but I would fill the frame with the flower. Even closer. Okay. Absolutely. Well, um, I, I don't know if it's an excuse or not, but uh, if you look at the leaf in the upper right hand corner, it curved down and kind of pointed to yeah. it. And I thought that that gave it some uh, strength. Yeah. And of course, the contrast of the colors, the blue greens and the yellow, bright mm -hmm. yellow. Oh, I did learn something about the flower, right? right. Well, uh, I did learn something about the flower itself. I was wondering what kind it was. And right when I was posting it in Lightroom, over on the right-hand side, there was a little dotted box. And I pressed, I don't know what made me press on the box, but I pressed on it and it identified the flower. You're kidding. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you look over on the right-hand corner, uh, you'll see a little uh, double double frame box with the little icon inside it. And um, it said something like, if you want to know more. And so I clicked on it and it identified the flower and it is a uh, sunflower. Apparently sunflowers come in many different varieties. Yeah. And this one is called the, the 10 petal sunflower. And I counted it up and I got 11 petals and I thought, okay, <laughs> it doesn't matter how many petals it has. If, it's, if it only has eight, nine or 10, it's called a 10 petal sunflower. <laughs> I, I counted 11 plus yeah. one bug. Yeah. Anyway. That's, that's, uh, I, you know what, uh, you guys go ahead and uh, take it apart because that's why it's up here to learn from what, what did I do that I could have done better? Well, even if you just cropped a little bit, like here, mm -hmm. here, here, you would still have part of this showing, but it would enlarge the sunflower. Mm hmm I think mm -hmm. cropping a little off the left, which yeah. would move the sunflower out of the middle, but keep the leaf in the upper right, gives mm -hmm. you like a, a conversation within the picture. Mm -hmm. Add a couple of little drops of water here. <laughs> mm. Okay. Just to add a little extra interest, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah, the big thing for me is the is the left side. It's it's too dead. Yeah. So I think bringing that in, you don't need to. You don't really need to take anything off the top because of the leaf up there. Yeah. Bringing that left in about where Margie's got her uh, her mouse hat there, mm -hmm. uh, I think would be would enhance that picture quite a bit because it would eliminate some of that dead space that my eye keeps going to trying to figure out why what's there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're saying basically about an inch off the vertical left side and an inch off the horizontal bottom. The bottom Try it. doesn't bother yeah. me. The, the, oh, okay. I think just the left side. See, yeah. I really can't. I can't see the whole the whole picture from from there. I mean, I I can see it fine on my own screen, but 
Yeah, yeah, I would, I would cut, yeah. I would cut about an inch or so off the left hand side and leave the top and bottom alone. Yeah. Too loose. I, I do like the way the yeah uh, stem comes up. You can still see the stem coming up. Tighten it up. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. Other than that, it's good and sharp, and the bug in there really adds a little extra interest. So um, bring that bug out next time from the freezer and put him back on another flower. <laughs> oh, gosh, I can't believe you. <laughs> Be kind to a bug week. Well, let me just uh, come over here, see if there was some. All right, Annie's not here, so we're not going to do hers. Though she has three of them here. We really would like to have her here. Okay, here's one. I don't think we've critiqued that one, or do you want to critique this one? Is Carl on? I don't know, is he? No, Carl's not on. All right. And this is Linda's. Linda's still on? Yep. Yep, Linda's still here. All right, let's bring it on up. Okay, start off with something good. Glad you didn't get stung. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely good. <laughs> I'm glad you did catch a, a, a bug. You know, this is uh, a bee, I mean. Uh, and I like to see the pollen all the way around. Mm -hmm. I really would like to see his face, not just body, but I'd like to see the face. Okay. And normally they have a pollen sack on them. And I would like to have seen that pollen sack if this one had one on there. But the face is very important to me. It's a, a little bit soft, but I do like the way You've got all of the pollen he is collecting. Is there a way in Lightroom to get rid of some of the shadow at the bottom at all? Sure, well, you do so, but you're not going to eliminate them. The shadow, the, probably the shadow slider might lighten it up some, but it will also lighten up the uh, yeah. underside of the rest of it too. Uh, okay. well, you can mask it. Yeah, I was going to say definitely mask it. Then you can lighten up whatever you want to lighten yeah. up. Okay. Anything else? This is Kim's. I like the crop. How she cropped it. What did you take this photo with? I have no idea. Probably, I have a macro lens that I use, so I probably took it with that. I'd have to go uh, back. I mean, so that'll be in the metadata. You know, Marjorie says, says it's not very sharp, but I think as close as it is, it's pretty sharp. Yeah, yeah. I do too. You know, you might you might run it through a little, uh, like a topaz something, and it yeah. will clean it a little bit. But it's not. It's 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 really. The background is actually quite sharp. The bee itself is just a subject I'm saying is a little bit on the soft side. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, oh, no, like I'd, you said, tall I'd say that, pass. No, I, it looks to me like the uh, depth of field, of course, is very narrow, but the bee itself is, is very sharp, but the depth of field is so narrow that if you go to the tip of its wings and the area at the highest part of its back closest to the camera, it's a little soft, but the rest of it, uh, you can count the pollen. Yeah, I'm talking about up in here where the important part is, where the head mm -hmm. is, was mm -hmm. soft. Yeah. This over yeah. here is what seems yeah. a little bit sharper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think you might have lost just a hair on your on your depth of field, but and that yeah. doesn't bother me as much as that little is is the yellow on the left hand side. 
The field of yellow? Right there. That, that That's driving me insane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> But you it is a good me. shot. I mean, you guys yeah. know me, and that, that that kind of thing would drive would drive yeah. me insane. But no, it's I think it, I think it's a good shot. I think um, I think with a little bit of work in in Lightroom, we can enhance we you know you could enhance it a little bit more and make it a little bit better. A little bit of topaz in there to, to sharpen it up just a hair. And yeah, you got you got a pretty cool shot of a bee. I do agree with Margie. You know, I, I, I'd like to see the other side of his uh, right. on the other side. I'd like to see him looking at me. Yeah, I've got plenty of pictures of the front of bees too. So, <laughs> but I think it's a, I think it's a cool shot. It has a lot of stuff going on. This yeah. would have been a this would have been a good shot to turn into the pollinators uh, thing that I'm going to be judging here in a couple of days. Uh, there's a photo contest for some kind of pollinators thing in Westmoreland County. Wow. <clears throat> so I think that would have been a good one to turn into there. And there's a little dot right here. Yes. <laughs> okay. Those are the things that we're going to pick out every time, Linda. Yeah, it is. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Brian, um, I got a question for you on the pollinator competition. So, were those entries already due? Yeah, I'm judging Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I didn't I'm hear about it. on that. Yeah, I don't, know, not... I don't know what they did as far as advertising it, but she said that. Uh, the um she said that they're down a little bit as far as how many they had they had 243 adult entries and 40 youth entries this year oh yeah i missed that yeah i don't i don't i never seen any advertisement for it at all anywhere but i'm not you know i don't spend much time in westmoreland county anymore so. well the thing about it i'm with the garden club and some of them didn't even know about it. And, you know, I get uh, different emails from not only the garden club, but from up there at, uh, ah, what do you call it over there? Where they, oh, come on, Brian, where you go to judge. This conservatory. Yeah, no, well, yeah, but there's, it's another name. But uh, um, having uh, said that, uh, huh? Southern Alleghenies? No, no, this is up near Rolling Rock Club. Oh, what is? Oh, anyway. Uh, Penguin Court? Uh, yeah, Pigeon Penguin Court. Court. Yeah, Pigeon, Pigeon yeah Court. Penguin yeah, Court. I get stuff Penguin from them Court. all the time, but uh, they never sent anything to me about it. So I was shocked when Annie actually came up and said she'll be judging for there. And I said, but. No one knows anything about it. I checked with the garden club. They didn't know. Huh. Well, and they I'll, didn't send me anything. I'll, I'll mention to them that uh, a bunch of the people that we know didn't never seen any advertisement. So maybe Absolutely they'll, uh, none. They'll they'll get a little more advertisement for next year. Yeah. Because I know I know last year it took till nearly five o'clock to get through all the photographs. Yeah. Um, and she said we're she said we'll probably be done by you know noon on on Wednesday. So it won't take long to get through 250 photographs. Yeah. All right. Oh, Carolyn's what? not here. Annie's Speaking not of, here. What's that, Mark? Speaking of <laughs> what? advertisement, if anybody wants some postcards for our show at Greensburg Art Center, I have a bunch here that you can hand out or send to your loved ones and friends. Just let me know and I'll get them to you. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, Carolyn's not here. Annie's not here. All right. This is a self-portrait, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> he was getting mad. He actually came up the glass and was just really giving me the dirty looks and then his nose went to the glass and it, yeah he, he didn't like me over there because I was right in his face that's when I said he's saying stop taking my picture <laughs> he looks like he's holding a camera 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's yeah. a project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a baby. It was a baby. A young one. Put it that away. Okay. Phone. Give me some critiquing. I need it. Love the expression that he has. Hmm. Anything else? Anything? How can I improve him? I think there's a couple of little spots where he's got hair that's catching the light differently. There's one right above his mouth, like on the on the darker side. Yeah. That yeah. well, that one, and then one right above his mouth. Yeah. That one. Yep. And then up by his ear. Oh yeah, yeah, right here. And those keep catching my eye. All righty. But other than that, I mean, he's the expression is great, and he everything else is really clear. The background isn't like in the way or distracting either. Okay. I I like the I like the expression. It's sharp. Um, the focus point's good. Um, I would just I would actually just tighten it up a little bit more. Make it more about him and not the background. Okay. You know, get, it, get rid get, of some of this over here. Yeah, let's let's make it a full frame yeah. picture, all about him. Okay. You know what I mean? Because yep, the background in in this picture doesn't do anything to add to it. It doesn't lead you to go look at something else. You know. So let's let's make it all about the, all about him because he's either happy or pissed, one or the other. So <laughs> yeah, he's not happy. <laughs> he so, happy. Yeah, and me, I would that would be really the only thing I would change would be just just tighten it up. All get righty. Rid of, get rid of the background. Get rid of the side and and make that whole picture about him. All right. Sounds well, as, as a uh, people photographer, I would have said, just put the camera in portrait position and take it as if that's what you were going to do to make five by sevens, eight by tens, four by fives. Just put his head right in that one spot there, allowing for his uh, left and right sides and just basically take uh, what would be a people portrait. All right. Yeah. Since I do a lot of people portrait. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows that I don't do any kind of people, people portrait. Uh, Margie, did you have to do that? Hold on. Okay, that's mine too. This is Linda's. You know, when, let me see if there's anybody new here. That we, oh, Jim, 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 Jim. Mm. All right. To Ocean City, just for context, Ocean City, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. The screen is dirty. I think that's from the screen. <laughs> See, yeah. we, I was doing that just a second ago. I thought there was a on that monkey's <laughs> yeah. mouth. There wasn't. It was my screen. So yeah, uh, I do like not only the subject, but I like the way you've caught the light on the seaweed. Well, Margie, you asked earlier. Your question was, "How do you make a landscape picture better?" Mm. And yeah. here's a good here's a good example how you make a landscape yes. picture better. Now I know he didn't bring the prop. I don't. I doubt very much that he throwed the seaweed there and <laughs> take the yeah. sand and make it look like it's been run over by water and all that stuff. But the seaweed it's in the true. foreground, I think, really adds to this picture. Yes. And then because if it wasn't the, in there, it would be just another landscape type right. picture. So, so that there, and then the line of the water that kind of takes you in and out of the picture, in yeah. and out of the picture, yes, right back, right back into the back there, and then we catch the sun, and then we have the bird, which um, yeah. I don't know if Jim put that in with a uh, brush or uh, I, I did not. I took several <laughs> shots. What? In fact, Margie, getting back to your previous question, 
birds are great for landscape photos. And I typically will wait one out if I think there's some in the area. Yeah. I think I, I think you just you just added there's a lot of there's a lot going on in the picture, but it's very simple too. Mm -hmm. And I, I I like the picture. I, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see this printed on metallic paper or a sheet of metal. Yeah. I think I think you got a uh, yeah, this is, this I, think is a, got a, I think you got a winner there, Jim. Yeah, this is a good example of the color grading. Yeah. Yep. I did because warm it up. The the overall tone, yeah, it, it's a warm. It's an overall warm yeah, tone. It is. Well, not only did I warm the whole photo, I I masked the sand because if you can picture beach sand, it's typically gray. Um, I intentionally warmed the sand up quite a bit. Yep. I think I think I see this picture with the title across the top of it. You know beach life and uh page 17 is this and it looks like a magazine cover to me yeah, yeah it's nice yeah i would buy that one jim <laughs> i'll give you a special discount yeah. <laughs> watch out it's only, it's only 30 percent more than everyone else's discount. that's right <laughs> no I, I i like that picture a lot yeah i also really like the the leading line of the dog footprints yeah yeah that's yeah those add to it as well yeah. take you right in and, and put you into the water yep yeah but the curve the way that the water curves in that is great i oh you couldn't ask I'd like to see curve. some longer curve. exposures too to see what the water could have done there but overall that's for a a fast shot because you you don't want the bird to be a blur. But... Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> the bird would be gone. Well, maybe if you took the shot without the bird, then a little longer exposure would be. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah. Or combine did, did them. You, did you use any kind of filters when you took that? Uh, no, not at all. Uh -uh. Okay. It's a good shot. I'd actually like to see it in black and white too, but no. <laughs> I, I said I'd like to see it. I didn't say no. it would be perfect, but I'd like to see it in black and white. Well, Brian, I would never thought to do that one in black and white, but I'll, well, I'll give it a try. Take, take a look at it and see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, is Bob here? He was earlier. Yeah. His name's on. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, we'll do Bob's. I can start off with this. This is just to me absolutely amazing that you are able to catch that much going in a wind because I've taken a lot of the uh, this so when it was in the wind, but I've never had that kind of grouping together. And I love I love this one an awful lot because of it. But I would have cut it back just a hair off of over here, just a little bit. It actually almost looks like a caterpillar. Yeah, this was taken at uh, Bushy Run. Uh, some uh, there's a whole section where it's overgrowth, uh, and so I caught this uh, right at the sunlight. Probably it was around one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and uh, I mean, there were a lot of them, so I just kind of uh, composed it to a certain section, and um, that's what I got. I think it's nice. Did you blow on it? I'm sorry. Did you blow on it? What did you do? No, nothing. I it was. I mean, there, yes. I don't think there was any big wind or anything like that. It was just. Uh, well, there was a little bit, you know, because some of these would fly off into the sunset or wherever yeah. they went. But no, I did not blow on these or anything like that. Yeah, that's just. It's really. I really like this shot a lot. Mm, thank you. Anybody else? I think it's a great close up. I do too. We we think done it's black and white on that one too. No, I well, I, if it were mine, it certainly would be black and white. <laughs> it has an implied sense of motion that's unusual. 
Yeah, Bob, I, I think I would I would give that a try in black and white just to see what it looks okay. like. I'll yeah. do that. Uh, well, one thing yes. I did take, one thing that I did on this one here was it called gradient mapping that is part of Photoshop and I'll be discussing that in the October uh, tips and all that. Um, it's called not gradients, but gradient mapping that helps you kind of, um, it's almost like color grading, but uh, helps you a little bit, a little bit more defined. All right. I was going to ask Dennis, as far as going to black and white, is there, is there too much white and subsequently not enough contrast if you'd turn that into black and white? And I think if you were to do it, if, if you were to do that, you would spend a little time on the areas like that on the left side where it's a little muddled in order to bring the contrast that is there out. Yeah, I'll try that. Yeah. It's just a neat shot. Boy, we've got some fantastic photographers. I can say that much. This one here is Beth's. We haven't done Beth's yet, so here we go. I ran into Dorothy Saturday, and she's talking about this place here. Oh, did she go to Maple Bottom Farm? I don't know. She mentioned it, but I don't have any idea where. Yeah. Yeah, this place is in Dawson, and it, it's like... It's not much more than five minutes from my house. And they have different fields basically planted separately so that they'll have sunflowers all the way into September. And they've got little props out in the fields that you can go photograph or pose somebody by and things like that. Wow. And they'll do picnics out in the field too, if you wanna do a picnic. They also have Guernseys, so they will- Different color ones? Hmm? No, Different those are color. cows. Guernseys are cows. So they- Oh, jerseys. No, Guernseys. Guernseys. Type. Guernseys are a different type than jerseys. Okay. And Guernseys are kind of grayish. And they have very, very rich milk. So you get really, really good cheese. My family was a, a dairy family way back. Yeah, I've never heard and of a cheese dairy. family. Yeah. So I grew up on cheese. So what are the Oreo cows then? <laughs> the black and white ones? That's where chocolate milk comes from. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's There's all they different... make black and white ice cream. <laughs> yep. A lot of them are Holsteins. Okay. Maybe but that's what. There's a couple others around too. All right. I got, um, speaking of uh, sunflowers, I got a call from a chat on Reddit from Barbara Denning uh, on the second. She said, uh, Hi, would you know in Latrobe? There's a it, where there's a uh, wildflower sun a sunflower field, and yeah. so I looked it up for her, and there's one called Whistling Winds Farm, flower farm, uh, located just before arriving at Mammoth Lake Park. If you're driving south out of Latrobe, it's called uh, Whistling Winds Flower Farm. Hmm. So if you want to, apparently, and they, when I was looking at it, it said open. So I guess it would be a, a, an opportunity. They used to have one off of 30, right before your place, a Rex, yeah. Yeah. where they sell all the fruit and veggies. Oh. And um, out of that car, you know, cart or whatever. Right at and, the top of the hill there. Yeah. yeah. And I've actually had permission to go back into the back and... Uh, with my car and up and over hills and in dirt and all kinds of stuff to get to the farm. Yeah, it's and, called Sam Something Road. Some Sam Something Road. Uh, yeah, and there really wasn't much of a road there, so I'm sure I wiped out some squash and etc. that they were raising too. But I um, they have not planted that in the last couple of years. But that's where I would go to get my sunflower pictures. 
So, so Beth, I'm going to assume this was a lens baby, correct? Yep. 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 Okay. Yeah. I think it was the um, the soft focus optic. <sighs> okay. Yeah, because I, I see a line of focus, but I, I see a lot of, you know, you're soft in the front and soft in the back and soft on the sides, but there's a little little bit of focus there in the center. Yeah, I can see the focus right into yeah. here. I almost, I almost, I mean, personally, I almost would have preferred the, a, a hair further back with the focus line. So okay. that's the, that, that kind of facing flower line right there would have been a little bit more of the focus point rather than the green leaves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I like the, I like the, the out of focus of it. I think it's cool. It looks great on a big screen. It's got a foreground, middle ground, and background. It's just all beautiful sunflowers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I think it's the leaves like, but that are a little sharper than everything else. Yeah. How are we on time? No, it's 8.57. Okay, well, we can do one more. Or we can just not do one more. I don't yeah. Ellen's not here, right? Those are Carl's. I Those mean, Carl's. Carl's. Yeah, no, he's not Carl's here. Carl's not here. So why don't we just... Uh, why don't we go ahead and stop there? Yeah. And I'll just go through a, a, quick, a quick little recap of a couple things so everyone remembers. All right, let me... Stop share. All right. So um, the Renaissance Festival is August 20th through September 25th. I looked those dates up while we were talking. Just if anyone wants to write that down. Um, get to be friends with Suzanne because she has a couple tickets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure, because I doubt if I'm going to be able to use all of those tickets. Uh, <laughs> Let me um, know. Yeah, if you didn't, if you didn't weren't here at the beginning or you didn't catch that, Suzanne won the uh, won the contest at the Renaissance Festival this year. So, oh, nice, very nice, Suzanne. Congratulations to mm -hmm. Suzanne uh, and mm -hmm. Melissa got a uh, honorable mention as well. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, photo walk is the twentieth uh, Saturday, the twentieth at seven o'clock at the Mount at, in Mount Pleasant, and we're meeting at the gazebo at seven. And if anyone can't make that and they would like to go on the 21st, let Marty know. She may be, she can go on the 21st as well at seven o'clock. So that would be Saturday or Sunday. But let Marty know if you need to, if you want to meet up on Sunday. Um, rain date should be the 27th, I think you said. Yeah, I do believe we did set up a rain date for the following weekend. No. Um, yeah, we have discount you're... tickets for the Renaissance Festival. There are, if you order tickets online right now, there's a couple buck discounts. You can get them for twenty three dollars and fifty cents mm -hmm. instead of twenty five. Um, I didn't see anything where they said about the tickets at Wendy's or anything like that, like they've been yeah. doing, like they've done in the past. But uh, those may be available. And um, Take a look at, uh, I think it was Groupon that one year they did Groupon tickets and they were like half price or something through there. So I don't know if they're doing that or not, but uh, I kind of keep an eye out different places to see where tickets are available. Um, Brian, are we going to schedule a day where we can expect uh, the club members to be uh, en masse? Yes, yes, we will. It won't be the first weekend because we have the photo walk the first weekend at the Mount Pleasant. So I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll get, we'll get one in there um, sometime after that. We got six weekends to get, to get to it. So yeah, we'll definitely get one scheduled in for the, okay. as a group to go. Right. That's when I'll want to go. Okay. Yeah. I'll plan. I, I plan to be there a couple of times this year, hopefully. Uh, so. Yeah. I'm planning three or four. Yep. So. I always go several times, so. Uh, and 
remember that the prospectus for the Greensburg uh, show is due by the 13th to Marty. So if you're thinking about joining in on that show, let's get those pros prospectuses done and filled out and sent over to Marty so she can let me know how many people we have to beg to put pictures in. Uh, that, yeah. That's this weekend. By the that's 13th, 13th, yeah, that's Saturday. Hmm. So if you're planning on doing something, at least get the prospectus done. We don't have to, we don't drop off till September 2nd. So we got a month yet to, as far as, well, just a little less than a month to get the, yeah. uh, get the pictures ready. But so right. we do have a little, we do have a new little photographer. Gracie has um, picked up the camera and she's taking some pictures. So um, we're even going to enter one of hers, I think. In the show, I'll let her pick one. Yes, uh, I've Gracie? I've heard that Gracie Gracie has graduated to the big girl camera. Yeah, she did. <laughs> um, and I've heard lots of stories about uh, things that Gracie was taking pictures of and stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of her work because uh, I think it's going to be interesting to get her perspective on things. So I'm excited about that. I am too. I know that you and you and Margie and uh, Annie went out the other day with Gracie and did some pictures. So they were telling stories about it the other night. I'm 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 excited to see some. Yeah, yeah. Y'all who don't know who Gracie is, that's Marty's daughter, and she's six years old, hmm. and she loves taking pictures. Loves it. All right, guys. That was one on the beach, right, Marty? She was one on the beach. The beach yeah. photo. Yes. Yeah, cute, very cute. That's hey guys. And I, well, here's a little bit of background on her. Um, so she was shaken when she was an infant, and so she has scarring behind her eyes, and she also had a stroke um, that affected her left side. So for her to actually be able to take a picture is a miracle. Um, but even holding the camera is difficult for her, but she is enjoying. She really is. Good. Um, Good. Encourage her. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. If there is nothing else from anyone else, I'll uh, we can say have a good evening. Good night. Bye. Right. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Hopping in, Bye. and we'll see you guys soon. Okay. Bye for now. Good night, all. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.